Hey people, welcome to the IDP After Show. I'm Jace Abbey and I've got a bumper edition of the ranking show for you ahead of week four. As usual, I've invited a new guest to join me as we go position by position, highlighting some of the guys that we really like this week and some of the guys that we don't. And I'm super pleased to welcome uh, onto this episode a certain Mr. Joseph Hagen, a.k.a. Joey the Tooth, writer and ranker for Football Guys. Joey, um, as we were talking about pre-show, we've kind of worked together for, for years and have stayed in touch over that over that time. Um, you know, I've been a big fan of your work for forever and a day. Uh, how are you, man? Keeping busy? Oh, yeah, definitely keeping busy. Uh, just doing the weekly article, the Dean Line stream article, keeping up with the family. Sick family at the moment, but just keeping up with the family. But uh, yeah, everything's good, man. How about you? Yeah, all good, all good. Loving, loving life, loving football. Uh, yeah, it's it's. There's not, nothing to complain about right football's now. Football's full swing uh, right now. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. We're we're kind of like in our groove now, aren't we? Four weeks in, um, we know where we're at. We we kind of like yeah into that sort of uh, that comfortable schedule of putting out content, and of course we've got loads of data to to look at. Um, content, yes, but as long as the injuries just take it easy a little bit. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't mind them too much unless there's like last minute announcements just before right. I put out an article or just after you put out an article or finish preparing for a show, right? They're the worst. And my article goes out on Wednesdays and it's like, all right, you see a Friday injury come up and you're like, <sighs> edit. <Yep. laughs> I know that feeling. Yep. Um, so look, we got we got a lot to unpack uh, tonight. So let's just jump let's jump straight into it. Let's talk yes. about these uh, these linebackers first of all. So so what what linebackers are you excited about for week four? Um, oddly enough, uh, it's somebody who I've been really down on actually going into the season is uh, Patrick Queen of the Ravens. Uh, I, I wasn't a big fan of him going into the season. They didn't pick up his fifth-year option. They drafted Trenton Simpson. They had Kyle Hamilton, who I figured would play a lot in the box. So Patrick Queen lost. He even got benched last season at one point. He was nowhere near an every-down player. This year, he's literally almost an every-down player. He's played one less snap than Roquan Smith. He's seventh in the league in tackles with 31 tackles. And he gets to play the the Cleveland Browns this week, who are generally a pretty run heavy team. And I, I just, and plus Patrick queen is a good pass rusher and the Browns have given up quite a few sacks this year. I think they're top five, six in the league in sacks allowed. So Patrick queen is a pretty good linebacker to fire up this week. Yeah. He's kind of, he's kind of blowing up, isn't he? And you know, he had a really productive year last year, but I was, I was with you. I kind of like had that, that hangover from his first two years where, he was he was just such a bad player if you want right. right. He was such a bad player. And last year he kind of kind of took that step and it seems to have continued and he seems to have got even better this year. So yeah, I was I was I got a ton of Trenton with Trenton Simpson in loads of places with in yeah, the I hope figured he would just you know, take over. Yeah. Um and maybe maybe I was just expecting too much too soon, and that still might happen late in the season. But it's hard to see now the way that the way that Queen is is kind of producing. So yeah, I love the call. Um, so my first guy is uh, Nate Landman. Um, so he's my uh, LB44, uh, one, and one behind Josie Jewell, if Jewell plays, that is, uh, and one right. ahead of, uh, of Cole Holcomb. Um, so yeah, I think he's one of the, the biggest biggest winners at the position uh, going into so this week for me. Um, kind of falls into that, that every down role um, following that injury to uh, uh, Troy Anderson, um, kind of one of our breakout candidates for for the year, I'm still a little bit sore about that. Yeah, same. Um, and you know, as we know, you know, the Falcons use use two linebackers, um, two full time linebackers, uh, pretty much every week, or they have done so far through the first the first three weeks. Uh, and we saw Landman fill in for Anderson when when Anderson missed like week two with a concussion, uh, and he started to do the same last week when uh, when Anderson left again. So, yeah, he's not. Um, I said the same about someone last week, but this guy's not. A, he's not a sexy pick, right? He's not going to get anyone too excited, but. Um, but yeah, I like him to play a lot of snaps. Um, and I just, yeah, I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be a pretty decent player, um, this, this week or pretty productive player this week. Um, uh, interesting, interesting fact, not sure if you, not if you saw in the, uh, the Slack chat, someone mentioned, but, um, he's got a sister called Ocean Trail. Did you, did you see that? I did see that. It's such a good snap, the Slack chat too, but yeah, it's Ocean Trail. Ocean Trail, and uh, what's what's even better is that she she swims collegiately. She's like <laughs> really living up to her name, right? 
It's amazing. How many times do you reckon you've heard that joke as well, right? It's, uh, oh my gosh, seriously. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> so who's your uh, who's your next guy? Who's your next linebacker that you like uh, for week four? The next guy, uh, Kaiser White. Another guy who's kind of surprised this year. He went into Arizona. I mean, they had, they started the season. Everybody's like Isaiah Simmons and um, why am I, Zayvon Collins. They're, everybody's like, yeah. well, this, they're linebackers. All right, Isaiah Simmons moved to the slot a lot last year. And then they signed Kaiser White. And a lot of people were like, hey, it's just Kaiser White, whatever. He's just kind of there for depth. And then all of a sudden, Zayvon Collins moves to the edge and Isaiah Simmons moves to safety and then ultimately gets traded. And then it's just Kaiser White. He's literally the every down linebacker in Arizona and he's played well. He's top 10 in tackles. I think he's ninth overall with 30. He has an interception and a sack on the season. And uh, he plays the 49ers this week and the 49ers are probably going to get up pretty heavy on him just because they've been playing fantastic this year. So it's probably going to be a pretty run heavy game script, which should bode well for Kaiser white. Yep. Another good call. Um, I'm. It's funny. I'm sure I'll let go of this at some point. Whenever I hear his name, I'm still a little bit sore that my my charges let him let him go, let him walk for for yeah. peanuts when we were we we've been struggling to find sort of a, a solid player at the position for so many years. And um, you know, the start of this year hasn't been. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's it's hard. Even Perriman wasn't that that good for us. He kind of like blossomed when he left. To uh, oh no, Merriman. Um, I was looking at your jersey in the back. Oh right, yeah. I love I love that guy. Um, but yeah, we, we just, we really struggled and he, he left and signed for peanut. I think it was like a, a five mil contract. He signed one year, um, with the Eagles. And I was just like, why, why are we not spending that on him? He right. wasn't an amazing player, but he was productive and he was, you know, even an average player at that position was better than anything we'd had, of um, in, in the years before. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised to see him emerge as that, that sort of top dog at the position for the, for the Cardinals kind of like you say, um, kind of I guess like Collins going to the edge and, and Simmons not being that real that, that guy that you want in the middle um, I guess and ultimately traded um, so yeah it's, it's good to see White have success and I think it will continue he's uh, he's, a, he's a good player he's, yeah. he's an alright player and um, yeah I love I love the call he had a, like you say that big week last week as well so he's going to he's going to produce like that on occasion for, for pretty much the rest of the season injuries uh, notwithstanding so right. yeah I like it um, so my my second guy is uh, Chad Moomer, um, and it's yeah. it's yeah it's a pretty pretty straightforward one. He's he's actually still unranked uh, in my list, um, but I'll I'll it's almost certainly tough. have it. Yeah, yeah, I'll have him ranked um, at some point. I'm kind of just waiting to see what happens with you know met one of these many guys that's currently listed as questionable who haven't practiced and we've only sort of practiced in limited fashions like the Eric Kendricks the the Denzel Perriman, the right. Josie Jewell, Nick Bolton, that sort of type. So I'll, I'll definitely have Mooma in my rankings, maybe in the 40 range um, uh, at some point. But yeah, as you know, uh, Devin Lloyd is is out and he's going to be out for two weeks, not traveling to uh, to London. Um, so while this is a, a weekly show, I kind of like Mooma for the next few. Um, and yeah, we've seen Mooma before. Um, we saw him last year when uh, he kind of started to leech a few snaps from, from Lloyd partway through yeah. the season. Um, I, I try not to talk about tackling efficiency too much because it's not it's not really that predictive. But Muma did did all right last year um, with the snaps that he had three thirty nine tackles in three hundred nineteen snaps. Yeah. Um, so about twelve percent. So yeah, that's, that's pretty decent. Um, and he looked he looked kind of good for the most part. He kind of struggled in in coverage, um, but then you know, like I often too. say. Most rookies do, and Devin Lloyd was no exception. In fact, Lloyd, Lloyd looked Lloyd worse worked. in, in <laughs> coverage, right? Um, so yeah, um, while I said Moomin will be ranked in the in the forties, it's well, it's kind of well within his range to to outperform yeah. that um, because he's I mean, going to be playing almost every down. That's what Jackson Jacksonville does. So right, and I'm interested to see how he does in these two weeks to see. I mean, if he performs at a at a good level, and if he shows that he's a good, much better in coverage is he going to start to leech snaps from Lloyd again? Because Lloyd still this year has not looked great in coverage. He's been the volume tackler this year, but he still hasn't looked good in coverage. Exactly. Yeah. And I've, I am really interested to see the same thing. Um, I, 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 I didn't see the injury first of all. I, I just assumed that Muma, when I looked at the snap, the snap right. counts that Muma had sort of eaten into his snap count a little bit like he did last year. But that, that appears to be more sort of uh, injury, injury related now. But yeah, like you say, I wouldn't be surprised if, even when Lloyd comes back, this we start to see the two kind of 
cannibalizing each other a little bit. So yeah, interesting one to watch. Uh, I guess it'll be sort of week week six at that point. So um, so yeah, that's the guys we like. Who who aren't we so keen on uh, for for week four at the linebacker spot? Um, Matt Milano. Matt Milano is actually a guy who uh, I said if he's on your team, you should probably sell high going into the season because a lot of people were saying that Matt Milano's role was going to increase with the with the loss of Tremaine Edmonds. But honestly, if you look at his season last season, it wasn't like he scored well, but he didn't really have a good season. He had of I think it was uh, there was sixty or sixty five players who played over five hundred snaps, sixty or sixty five linebackers. He actually had the worst missed tackle rate, like sixteen and a half percent. So his role of that weak side linebacker wasn't ever going to change. He He's best when he's in space. He's best in coverage. He's not going to move to the middle linebacker to be where Tremaine Edmonds was, which is why I was actually excited about whoever won Tremaine Edmonds' job, which was Terrell Bernard was going to be a guy I was going to pick this week. But the but, uh, reason I don't like Milano even more this week is because he's playing Miami. Miami, sure, they ran the ball a lot last week, but they also put up 70 points. So <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen this week against Buffalo, but they, Miami generally likes to pass outside. They have Tyree Kill and they like Jalen Waddle. They don't really use tight ends that much. They don't use the slot that much. So Milano's not going to see – he's not going to be able to rack up the points and coverage, and he's obviously not going to get all the tackles because it's going to be Bernard in the middle. So Milano's the guy I have dropping way down probably in that LB50 range. Yeah, and you'll, you'll, there'll probably be a few raised eyebrows about that one because he's one of those guys – He's a good player, but he's not always doesn't always translate, does it? He's like yeah. um he just yeah, he's been a bit underwhelming in, in, in the last couple of weeks in terms of his, his tackle efficiency. I said I wouldn't talk about it too much, but you know, here we are. Um and uh and yeah, that's that's not unusual. Um I'm a fan of the player and it's sometimes uh sometimes forget about that when you come to do rankings, don't you? Um, a guy right. who's a good player. You know, Fred Warner's been that guy for me in the past. Not oh, always nice. the most right. productive fantasy player, but but a really good NFL player. And it's, right. you just have to remind yourself that this when we're doing these rankings, it's just about fantasy production. You can't you can't um, you can't like allow your bias to creep in, can you? Right. Um, but no, I like I like the call. Um, let's let's see what happens oh yeah that that other spot that i, I kind of got caught out i tried to get as much dodson and bernard in as many spaces as possible um but I, in some leagues i just i was only able to get one of the two um but yeah fortunately i did end up with quite a lot of bernard and he's yeah he's he's gone off he's gone off i mean that last week oh, was, yeah. was, was was unreal amazing. um yeah so my my first uh linebacker that i'm fading this week is is willie gay um and he's he's unranked. In, in fairness, he was only ranked forty six last week. Um, you know, Mick, Nick Bolton missed week three mm-hmm. uh, with a with that sort of nagging ankle injury, as we all know. Um, I guess what we didn't know was was who was going to be the main guy to to replace him. Um, Gay had been sort of the, the next man up, second in snap share uh, for the first couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, they, they turned to, they turned to Tranquil. It wasn't, it wasn't wholly surprising. I don't think, um, you know, they signed Tranquil for a reason. Um, what was the surprising thing was that Tranquil signed there in the first place, given that, right. he, 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 you know, maybe could have got a, a clearer path to snaps elsewhere, but, um, but yeah, um, it was Tranquil 82%, uh, even Leo Chanel, six, 67% and, and Gay was down at 41. So, um, you know that second spot had sort of marginal value anyway, hence why Gay was only ranked in the in the low forties in the rankings. But what we saw last week just kind of muddies muddies the water even more to the point where I wouldn't roster um, unless it was a deep league. I wouldn't roster roster anyone behind behind Bolton. I don't know about right. you. Oh, same. Agreed. Yeah, Willie Gay, man. Everybody's kind of holding on. Like he had so much potential as a rookie coming in and. He didn't produce as a rookie, and then Nick Bolton came in, and Nick Bolton as a rookie just blew up and kind of pushed Willie Gay to the wayside. And then last year, it was like when Nick Bolton was even better, and I was like, is anything ever going to happen with Willie Gay? And then, all right, Nick Bolton's injured. All right, let's play Willie Gay. And then, no, he's – I think Willie Gay is like Spagnuolo's just like, all right, this project is done. This project's done. We're going to bring in Chanel a little more, see what we have with him, and we have Franklin yeah. here in the meantime. So, Yeah. Yeah, it's just kind of yeah, it's just a weird situation. But it's just time to time to take it for what it is and not hope, not keep hoping for something different. Right. I think um, I know a few people are a bit concerned about the fact that Bolton hasn't been that 
every down guy um, for a couple of weeks. But I think there's been reasons in each case. I think there was like yeah, the yeah. humidity in week two and then that sort of nagging injury um, uh, since. So, yeah. I, it's I, not that I'm he didn't play well. Obviously. Yeah. 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 He's, I've still got him ranked uh, in my top 12, I think. Yeah. Um, I say that number fifteen this week, but that's that's with one eye on the fact that you know he's he's been que- he's questionable going into the game. So right. yeah, I start I still consider him a, a, an LB one easily easily. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, who's the who's the next guy that you that you hate <laughs> putting words in your mouth for a week for? Um, David Long of the uh, the Dolphins. So he's had yeah. two productive weeks since that week one where he only saw I think it was like twenty percent snap share. But the thing that worries me about week four is. If you ask the coach, coach says, well, the reason he didn't play is because Van Ginkle's our guy when we run nickel. And they're playing Buffalo this this week, who is one of the most pass-heavy teams in the NFL. So they're going to be in a lot of nickel-dime packages. So I don't think Long's going to have that full snap share. I think he's going to drop. I mean, he'll, he'll probably still see more just because he's played better in the past two weeks. But I don't see him being anywhere close to an every-down role, especially if they're going to play a lot of nickel. So I'm I'm bumping David Long way down my rankings. Yeah, yeah, you and me both. I haven't got him ranked this week. Um, I had him ranked uh, last week, um, but I think I might have dropped him out of my rankings after realizing the the, the Van Ginkle connection. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously, Jalen Phillips just this huge sort of knock on effect on 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 the on the other two guys. So, yeah, it's 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 hard to it's hard to recommend a guy even in the top fifty seventy five um, when he's only playing barely half. The available snaps, right? And there's right. there's there's other there's other players that you you just rather have in that situation. I can't. I was one of those people that thought Long might be the guy for Miami um, after he signed, but I did too. Clearly, clearly they just love they love Baker. They love what he offers, and uh, yeah, and man, that seems to, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's been that weird sort of utility player, hasn't he, Van Ginkle, yeah. for a while? Um, but seems to have found his his, his hole, uh, his his role there, I guess, for the uh, for the for the Dolphins. So it's nice, nice to see, nice to see. Um, so my next guy, um, yeah, if Matt Milano was going to raise eyebrows, and then then Cole Cole Holcomb will too. Um, I mentioned him, uh, I think, in week one in the same section. Um, uh, it, you know, I get it. He's 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 one of those guys that we used to be in super productive. I'll be forty five in my rankings, by the way. Um, uh, one behind Nate Lamman. Didn't imagine that I'd be saying that at any point this year. That sentence just sounds weird now. No. Um, and one ahead of uh, of Kenneth Murray. Um, and obviously Murray would only remain that low if if Eric Hendricks misses misses this week. So he's he's purely here again because of his his snap share um, in week one seventy eight percent. Felt a little more comfortable about him when we saw him play sort of ninety percent in week two. But last week he was back down to to seventy four percent. Uh, and so in two of his three weeks, he's been barely ahead of uh, Quan Alexander in right. in playing time. And that's that's concerning. Um, Very concerning. And, yeah. I mean, like these numbers don't sound alarming, like super alarming. He's, he's getting a healthy-ish snap share, but kind of like we're used to seeing him play 100% of the available snaps. Obviously, last year, missed missed a bunch because he wasn't healthy. But when he's when he's healthy, he's he's been that every down guy. And for a guy to lose 20, 25% of his snaps, um, yeah, you're not going to end up being one of the LB1s, LB2s, as we've seen him see, as, he, as we have seen in previous years. It's just not going to happen. Um, nobody can lose 20, 25% of their opportunities and, and, and remain one of the guys, right? So, right. Um, he's losing it he's, to, like, to an aging journeyman like Quan Alexander. He hasn't really been like a staple on a team since, honestly, since he left Tampa Bay. He, yeah. The 49ers thought he was going to be a guy, and then he, he kept getting injured, then he moved on. And I think he's been on, this is his third team since then, I think. So it's like, if he can't super weird win out the job from him, it's like what's going on with Holcomb this year? Exactly, exactly. I, I, it goes back to like the I think it was just before maybe it was just after the preseason when they listed Holcomb or Alexander on the depth chart, and I was like, this is just one of those weird depth chart things that we see, and we're going to invest too much time and too much energy into, and it, as it it's going to play out, and Holcomb is going to be the every down guy. Yeah, it seemed to be true in this case. So right. yeah, I. Just I don't hate him as a player. I just yeah, there's a bunch of guys who play more snaps volume. that I'll always play ahead of him. Yeah. Um, so uh that's linebackers in the books. Let's talk about the uh defensive line. Uh one of my one of my favorite positions is edge. Um who do you like for week four? 
All right, I'm going to do a, a little deep one right here. Uh, defensive tackle, Harrison Phillips for Minnesota. So I was amazed, honestly, when I was, I was looking at the defensive lineman, and I, I wanted to bring up a D tackle just because I know a lot of people play d- defensive tackle, required yep. leagues. He leads all defensive tackle, all, all defensive tackles in tackles. He has 23 in three games on the interior. That's almost eight a game on the interior. It's like that's kind of mind blowing, but I think he had, we had eight tackles in week one and I think he had 13 in week two. And I think it's just, he's been a volume hog in the center of that defense. And I don't really see him slowing down. He's 27 years old. I I was wondering, I I was wondering how old he was. He's still not that old. So he's kind of in his prime and he's playing fantastic. And he plays the Panthers who have a young quarterback. They're probably going to try to get the run game going with miles Sanders, Chuba Hubbard, so I I could see another five tackles, and if you're looking for a defensive tackle, five tackles is rock solid. Yeah, yeah. Um, he he came up on last week's show actually, and he's he's a guy that I overlooked um, going oh, into the season Damn. a little bit, right? And um, it depends on the league scoring, you know. Like you say, it's all about tackles with 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 uh, with him, and not really that sort of pass rush right. productivity. So, if you're in a league that you know DT required league that rewards tackles, then 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 yeah, Phillips is 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 is, is, is a really good a really good value piece to have. Um, and as I mentioned last week, what I really like about him is that that sort of snap share. It's a really healthy snap yeah. share for a DT for a DT. Uh, I forget the exact figures, but it was in the eighties, um, late seventies, eighties, which is which is high for the position. There These yeah. guys get get very tired and get rotated in and out. Um, I always think about Quinn and Williams when I when I want to talk about DTs and their playing time because he's he's super talented, but just doesn't get the snap share or hasn't always had that snap volume of some of the other elite players at the position. Um, but yeah, someone like a Harrison Phillips. You know he's not going to be super flashy. He's not going to end the season with uh, with ten sacks or even half that number, but it, he will be one of the the biggest producers of tackles at the position. So yeah, a lot to a lot to like about him. I like the call. Um, my my first guy is uh, Trey Trey Hendrickson. Um, so he's my edge uh, fifteen or DL DL nineteen, one behind uh, Josh Sweat and one ahead of uh, Montez Sweat. I uh, yeah. didn't, re- didn't realize that was the case actually. So yeah, he's he's kind of like the he's a he's a, he's in a sweat sandwich. This he's the filling in a sweat sandwich. <laughs> this week. Terrible. <laughs> Sounds like the most unappealing food ever. Uh, but yeah, he's uh, yeah huge game last week. Um, saw yeah. that. Uh, I guess around ten pressures. I think he led all defensive yeah. linemen in the league. Um, yeah. Two sacks. QB hit seven hurries. Um, I think he did. He have a, a sack called back as well. Uh, apparently, yeah. one of the yep. player. I can't remember for sure, but yeah, um, yeah, huge week. It's not really, it's not really that much of an outlier for him. He's performed at a, a high level for for years. Two hundred and this number surprised me when I looked at up right. Two hundred and eleven pressures and forty three sacks in the last three seasons. That's that's crazy. Wow. Um, uh, you know, really productive guy. Um, I love his matchup this weekend against the Titans. That's one of the reasons why he's oh, here. Yeah. In, addition, in addition to his big week last year, we've seen we've seen what uh, what opposition edge rushers can can do to the Titans um, this early into the season already. Um, he's he's going up against Andre Dillard, who's who's got a lot of uh, criticism this year, um, and I think most of it's uh, deserved. Um, but then he has faced some some pretty good players right. at the position. Um, but yeah. Still, he surrendered 16 pressures, uh, second only to uh, the Steelers, Dan Moore, uh, and he's allowed six sacks, which is double that of the next oh, player gosh. at the position. It's, uh, the one drawback with, with Hendrickson, I'd be remiss not to mention this, is that sort of tackle volume. He's, there's, there's, very, there's very few other players at the position that will generate as little tackle volume as, as Hendrickson, maybe Ngakwe uh, comes right. to mind, but right. he's, he, you know, so if it depends on your scoring again, if you have a big play league, you reward sacks uh, um, highly, then yeah, Hendrickson's a really good play. If you kind of rely more on tackles to kind of give players that weekly floor, then then maybe maybe he's not the guy for you. Well, um, then just pivot but, to yeah. the other side and go Sam Hubbard. I mean, yeah. They, they exactly. might be out with uh, Peter Skaronsky might be out too. Their rookie who played well in the first game, he might be out again. So that defense, yeah. that offensive line is just not good in Tennessee. Exactly. It's, they're one of those, when I look at the matchups for the week, I, one of the first things I look for with my edge guys is, is you know, 
who's playing the Titans at the moment. Right. Um, and there's a couple of other teams, the Steelers. Titans and the Commanders. Um, Commanders, yeah. Uh, I think he's been sat more than any other quarterback, hasn't he, Sam Howell? 19 so, yeah. times in three weeks. Uh, he, must be, he must be sore, right? <laughs> it's got to be. He must be like he must be like team team player in the dressing room, and then as soon as the other guy's back to back to turn, he's like, "What the hell? What? Yeah, just like, do me a do me a favor here." It's like, come on, guys, see this bruise? That's you. That bruise? That's you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so your next your next guy up. Uh, who uh, who else do you like on the DL? Uh, see, when I look at DLs, I, I find a lot of guys that are a little deeper, just because of the article I write. I think because I stream yeah. I write a streaming article every week, so I actually wrote this guy up last week, and I like him again this week. Uh, Mike Dana edge for uh kansas city chiefs he's had mm-hmm. a surprisingly productive season 11 tackles three sacks he, and uh him and uh carl Aftis have formed quite a good tandem and then you add jones collapsing the pocket on the inside and they're going up against the new york jets with zach wilson and zach wilson has zero pocket presence the kid i don't know what happened to him he went from looking like a legitimate quarterback in college to just completely lost in the NFL and I don't think he's ever going to find it. So I think that defensive line is just going to feast on Zach Wilson this week. Yeah. And the, and the, the, their offensive line is banged up again, isn't it? Right. Dwayne, Dwayne Brown's out. Yep. I think they moved Beckton to the, to the left, didn't they? So, I mean, like it's, yeah, I, I like that call. Mike Dana came. Yeah. One of those guys just kind of surprised me a little bit as well. He's kind of just been, there, not really right. done a huge amount. Um, I was thinking the of, rookie F was a Felix uh, Anudike Anudike Uzuma. Uzuma. Yeah. yeah, I figured he was going to be the guy. I mean, they drafted him the first round, and then Dana just kind of played well week one, and he's just been he's just been there and he's been playing well. Yeah, I'm playing a lot, which yeah. um, which always matters. So yeah, it's kind of one of those ones. He's he's not flashy. We 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 kind of want someone else to come and come through and, and kind of, you know, get yep. as excited, but you know, we've got to, we've got to take what we can get, haven't we? Yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, you could definitely do worse than Dana this week. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I've gone with, uh, Josh, Josh sweat. Um, so he's yeah. my edge edge 17 DL 20 one, uh, behind Jalen Phillips. If Phillips plays and one ahead of, uh, Trey Hendrickson, um, so I know he had a, a quieter game last week, um, but he was playing arguably the best left tackle in in the league, right. Tristan Worse, or at least one of them. Um, right. In the in the two weeks before that game, he'd had ten pressures, including two sacks, four QB hits, and four hurries. He also had a, a forced fumble as well. Um, so yeah, Sweat's one of those guys that I've been following really closely since he entered the league. I think. Um, and this is talking about our connection, Joey. Uh, I think it was the first article I ever wrote in IDP uh, way back for the IDP guys. Um, and it's just been a lot of fun kind of watching him, uh, watching him progress and following the course of his his career. And he's one yeah. of those guys for me that's got better every year he's been in the league. He's he's got he's become a better player and he's become more more productive. And that's just just really nice to see. Uh, especially given you know the, the the adversity he had with those with those injuries um, in his final year at uh, at college, so right. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, my love for Sweat aside, um, one of the main reasons I like him this this week is um, that he also has a you know a, a wonderful matchup. Um, he's got uh, bloody hell, I can't remember who it was now. I'm gonna have to edit Commanders. this out, Joey. That's the commanders. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the commanders. That's right. I have so, two yeah. streaming guys in the, against the commanders in my article this week, so don't worry. <laughs> okay, cool. Do you know what? I just completely mine went blank. I couldn't remember yep. who he had. So yeah, I'll cut this bit out. But um, in fact, I'll make a note of where it's at so I can do that. Right. Um, so yeah, one of the reasons I like Sweat this this week is is that matchup against the commanders. We talked about it before. Um, the, the the yeah the team that's allowed the most sacks oh. in the league. Um, I just think Sweat has a chance to to bounce back after that quieter week and continue his his strong season. Um, so let's uh, let's see what happens. I could be very wrong, but um, I like I like his chances. I do too, and I think that defensive line is it's just going to feast all over that Commanders line. I mean, you have Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter in the middle, and then the opposite side you have Hassan Reddick, who's literally done nothing this year. But this could be the week where he finally like snaps out of it. And I mean, he obviously has, he's a good player. He's obviously a good player. It's something to do with the scheme that this defensive coordinator is running or having him do. But this could be the week you could finally see Hassan Reddick finally break out. But 
even if he doesn't, I mean, with the collapsing pocket in the interior, Sweat or Reddick, one of them is going to have at least a sack, sack and a half. Have to. Yeah, you're right. And I, 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 I toyed with the idea of talking up Reddick in uh, in this spot actually. Um, but yeah, just I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. But yeah, if he's going to do it, this is the week to do it. And if he doesn't do it this week, then I'll start worrying more than I have so far. Um, you know, we've got to kind of remind us up. It's, it's we've only seen three games, but yeah, even so, it's, it's bizarre. I don't think the um, we talked a bit, a little bit about Reddick last week, and I had a look at his snap share a little, little more closely after after the uh, the poll after the show, and it's not that far behind the the average that he had last year. I think he's averaging right. something like 69 percent right, this year, exactly. and sixty nine percent last year. Last year, something like seventy three. Um, so it's not a huge difference. Um, so the, the the all the talk I think about the his diminishing role is isn't. I think we're overblowing that a little bit. He's just right. not being productive with his opportunities. Um, but yeah, this week, this weekend's his chance to kind of break that seal, break his duck, as we would say over here, and uh, and show us what uh, show us why we drafted him so highly. Um, yeah, seriously. Mm, uh, so who don't you like on the defensive line this this weekend? Um, it's not even this weekend. It's been this year so far. Cameron Jordan. He's. I think he might finally be showing his age. Yeah. He hasn't really been all that productive at all this season. And as you mentioned earlier, he's going against Tampa Bay, against Tristan Wirth. So it's it's just a recipe of just just sit him on your bench. Just don't just don't do it. He he's been he's been poor all season. I know you want him to be that Iron Man you always want him to be, but I don't think this is the week you want him to do it. Yeah, I agree. Um I think I think he's been dropping off he's been he's been relatively productive in terms of sacks um but right. sometimes you know sometimes players are a little bit lucky in terms of their, their their sack to pressure rate and i think jordan was one of those guys last year and i think he's not been quite the same player for some time so yes i like the call um uh yeah anyone that's going up against tristan Wirfs. Again, I talked about those players I look at or those teams that I look to in terms of who's playing against the Titans, the Commanders, um, and then I boost them in my rankings. But yeah, uh, on the other side of that, I look at who's playing against teams like the Bucks, like the Eagles, um, mm-hmm. and yeah, they 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 get a they get a, I put a big red flag against them for yep. the week, and he's one of those guys for me. So yeah, I do I do like that one. Um, my my first uh, defensive lineman that I'm fading this week and and in general actually uh, is is Zayvon Collins. Uh, so I've got him as my edge 48 or DL 63, one behind uh, Derek Brown, and one ahead of uh, John Franklin Myers. Um, and there's multiple reasons for this one. Uh, firstly, his his snap share has been been pretty poor, even if we take into account the 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 missed time from last week because of. That injury still failed to top sort of sixty percent in either of the first two weeks. It's just a really deep rotation at the position. I think there's like five, maybe six guys that are all seeing upwards of twenty percent of the snaps. Uh, and secondly, he's just he's just not very good as a pass rusher. Um, he had a big uh, big play in week one. I forget was it an interception um, to kind of like keep keepers happy that he was producing, right. but that's that was clearly not going to happen every week. Right. Uh, and he's 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 just you know people will point to the two sacks that he's had that he's had but that's like the only that's that's the only um, those two sacks have come from only three pressures in total uh, yeah. this season on sixty one pass rush attempts and that's just it's just not good enough no one can keep up that sort right. of what sixty six percent sack to pressure ratio is insane so uh, and thirdly well, his matchup this weekend forty nine. In the chat we were in, what were they saying? He has a zero percent win rate. It's crazy. I didn't realize didn't realize his win rate was that low. Was, um, but I think yeah, there's only one other player. It was DJ Wanham. Oh uh, yeah, another player I, I really don't like. Another player who's been weirdly productive. Um, right. But but yeah, you start to look just at whether or not he had volume. That's the yeah. Uh, that's the it. only reason. Yeah. Can he sustain that going forward? Probably not. And yeah, Collins, um, third reason I don't like him is his matchup. Yeah, like I say, the 49ers, um, Collins spends most of his time. um, Well, actually, he's one of those guys that plays time on both edges, the left and the right. Right. Um, Colton McKivitz on one side isn't isn't anything special, but Trent Williams remains one of the better pass blockers in the league. So yeah, combine those three things, the snap share, the lack of the lack of uh, pressures and the matchup, and there's just a not a lot to not like 
about about Collins for me. Um, just the whole situation just doesn't really work in his favor. Game script probably won't be kind this weekend as well. If we need a right. fourth reason, um, the Cardinals will be playing from behind. I think Collins will be playing the run more often than not. So plenty not to like about Collins. Now I've said that, watch him blow up and and put up 10 pressures and three sacks, right? It's going to happen because I actually 100% agree because he was a guy I was going to talk about too. <laughs> <He> was, <laughs> I was like, all right, Zay, it was going to be Zayvon Collins is going to be my next guy. But yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you 100%. I, yeah, he's just a guy, I, I, and in general, like you said, he just hasn't been productive. It's a, I know it's a new role for him, but I don't know. I think he, they just need to move him back to the middle. Yeah, I mean, it might work out for him as an edge rusher, um, but, and he might need more time. But right. you know, why? I, I saw him ranked as like the edge nineteen in in someone. Well, I can't name names because I can't remember whose rank it was. But he was ranked as the edge nineteen coming into the season, and I'm thinking. It's such a deep position. Why? Why have you got him so high? What have you seen that I've that I've completely missed? I think a lot um, of people were were grasped at the fact that everybody's looking for that next Micah Parsons, where somebody's going to play both off ball linebacker and edge and move around, and they're thinking you're just going to have inflated tackles. Everybody's looking for that next Micah Parsons. There isn't an ex Micah Parsons. It's just not going to happen. Micah Parsons isn't even that guy anymore. He's a full time edge player. It's just that yeah. position is not sustainable, so it's not going to happen. Stop looking for it. You make a good point. People were, yeah, looking for that. And I, the, the the second point was one that I'd forgotten about, the idea that maybe he'd be this this guy that would play a little bit in both roles and he'd have tackle volume that would be way above and beyond that of a normal edge player. Um, so that kind of makes some sense, I guess. Yeah, good point. Um, so you mentioned Collins was going to be your second guy that you don't like, so should, right. I, should, I, should I go straight into mine? Next one. Uh, no, actually, I, I have others. Uh, it's pretty much the entire defensive line for the Jets. Uh, don't start Carl Larson. Don't start Jermaine Johnson. Going up against, I know the, it's going against Kansas City. I mean, Kansas City's really good. Patrick Mahomes has great pocket presence. Uh, they have a great running game right now with literally what, three or four running backs. So just any, if you have any defensive lineman for the Jets, just sit him. Yeah. Yeah, like you say, he's. I think he's been sacked. Um, it's either the fewest or close to the fewest amount of times this right. year. He's just the master of evading pressure, isn't he? It really is. Um, so yeah, it, it's not even as if his his uh, offensive tackles are playing out of their skin. It's 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 more about Mahomes, like you it's say, his, his presence. pocket presence. And his no look yeah. passes. Ah, oh, God. <laughs> I want I want to like them more than I do, I but know. every time I see it, it's just it just means that my team aren't going to make the playoffs. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it's difficult. I have mixed feelings, um, but yeah, ha- hell of a player, and yeah, you're right to 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 fade any anyone that's that's playing against that that Chiefs offensive line outside of maybe the the that really the truly elite guys, you know, the undroppable guys. So yeah, it's a good shout. Um, my my next defensive lineman fade is Chase Chase Young. Um, mm. So I've still I've still got him as my edge uh, twenty nine or DL thirty nine. One ahead of Jonathan Allen. Uh, sorry, one behind Jonathan Allen and one ahead of David Onyemata. But I think I think this ranking might be slightly high. Uh, I got a bit excited about that that big game he had against uh, the Broncos. Yeah. Um, cons- considering what we've seen other teams do against the Broncos since. Um, and he had a quiet outing in in week two against uh, the Bills, no sacks. Um, missed almost um, 50% of his tackle attempts as well, bizarrely. Um, not a point that really concerns me too much. Doesn't seem to have been an issue over the course of his career. But yeah, kind of like an interesting point more than uh, a point of concern. Um, but the biggest reason I don't like Chase, uh, sorry, Chase Young this weekend is, 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 you know, matchup once again, Eagles offensive line. They've got two really good offensive tackles who have not allowed combined, not allowed a sack this year. Um, so yeah, I think the, again, the game script probably won't work in the commander's favor either. Right. Uh, they'll be playing, they'll be playing the run most of the time, limiting, limiting Young's opportunity to, to rush the passer. So yeah, put all those things together. And again, kind of adds up to fade for me. Especially with how well that Eagles run game all of a sudden with DeAndre Swift just looking like the player everybody was hoping he was supposed to be like his entire career. He just showed up two games ago. Yeah. But that that, that that run game is just humming right now. And they're just happy to turn to it heavily. 
as they, oh, yeah. as they should do when they're oh, yeah. playing with the lead. And I think they're going to be playing with the lead again this this weekend. So, oh, yeah. yeah, maybe maybe Chase Young uh, racks up racks up the tackles, but I don't think I don't think he's got a great shot to uh, to be productive as a pass rusher. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, so we're racing through these. Um, we're on to the defensive backs already. Uh, who do you like, safeties or cornerbacks? Um, I like Dax Hill. Uh, he's been actually a very productive player this year. Uh, he plays. He he's given me a, a Jesse Bates vibes in Cincy when he was first his first few years. Not last year when he only had like seventy tackles, but when he had over a hundred tackles multiple times from the free safety position. So Dax Hill's playing that free safety role mostly but he's still coming downhill quite often. He's still getting quite a few tackles, but he's also making plays in the ball. And that's where I'm seeing the Jesse Bates vibes. So he's filling that role exactly how Jesse Bates did. And he gets to play Tennessee this week, who throws the tight ends, who throws short routes, who you can undercut. They run the ball a ton with Spears and, um, and uh, Henry. So I think this is a week that, that Dax Hill can – have a, a nice tackle floor and potentially make some plays. Yeah, he's, he started fast, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, it's been really nice to see. He obviously played the waiting game last year. Right. Um, and then didn't they didn't they get rid of two safeties? It was yeah, obviously um, Jesse Bates and Jesse who was the Bates other one? And um, Von Bell. Von Bell, yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, the door the door opened wide for him to kind of step into that uh, that that bigger role, and he's just he's just taking it and run with it. He's it's been fun to watch. Um, yeah, long may it, long may it continue. Like you say, he's just one of those guys that seems to be everywhere, kind of flying yeah. around the ball. Um, wherever the ball is, he seems to be there, either either tackling or or coming down with some big plays. So we we know that that's not going to happen every week. Um, but this is a position that we we don't mind streaming. All um, right, and. And yeah, um, Hill. Hill is Hill is a guy that I've. Yeah, I was hoping you'd mention him actually this week because I didn't. Um, I, I I've got one guy I was going to mention who was a, a you know a, one of those guys that's, that played really well last week, but I didn't want to mention two um, because I like to look at other things as well as yeah. just just form. But yeah, Hills Hills flying, and I love I love the call. Um, so. The guy I mentioned uh, is uh, is Kyle Hamilton, so he's my first DB um, who's who's risen in my rankings this week, and I think that'll be uh, the same for for most rankers after what, what we saw last week. Um, so Jeff and I on last week's show, actually, Jeff uh, Pomazal and I talked about Hamilton as a DB fade, um, uh, someone that had fallen in our rankings rather than a fade. Actually, it's he no listen to it. Yeah, <laughs> listen to the show, and he was like, right, those guys. <laughs> I'll show them. I'll show them. I'll show that Jace Abbey. Who does he think he is? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's no secret that he, he kind of like he, he let us all down in the first first two weeks. Uh, failed to meet those expectations. I still had him ranked as my DB thirteen uh, going into uh, week three. Uh, I mentioned I liked his matchup against the Colts with with Minshew stepping in for for Anthony Richardson, and I liked that MG MJ Stewart had a big week in week two against. Um, the Colts right. um, and that their alignment splits. Um, so MJ Stewart and Kyle Hamilton were fairly similar. So, uh, but in no way did I expect what we saw, what we saw last week. And three sacks and, yeah. and one half. Crazy. Unreal. Uh, six tackles, five pressures, three sacks, and he obviously forced a fumble as well. Um, right. So he blitzed 12, 12 times in that game after doing so only four times in the first two games. And there's every, you know, there's every chance that he won't blitz. Uh, as often going forward, um, and there's even more of a chance that he won't be as efficient getting after the QB when right. uh, when he does blitz. Um, but there's more to the fact that there's more there's more reasons why he's risen in my rankings to the DB8 spot um, than simply the fact he played really well last week. And um, again, going back to similar players that have done well against the same opposition, Jordan Whitehead of the Jets uh, had a big game last week with ten solos. Against the Pats, and obviously, you know, while game script can change things massively, Hamilton is used similarly to to uh, to Whitehead, and that mm-hmm. gives me that sort of warm, fuzzy feeling that Hamilton can have a a good game against the the same opponent. So, uh, yeah, hoping for big things from Hamilton in uh, this week. Just kind of watch out, I guess, for listeners. He he did crop up on the uh, the injury report, questionable with uh, 
think it was a back injury. So just just keep an eye on that as the uh, as we get closer to game time. But yeah, I like him as a as a solid play at the position this week. Yeah, I'm, I was very happy to see them using more near the line blitzing. Is just it, it's a role that this is why I was fading Patrick Queen is because I thought it was a role like this that Hamilton was going to be playing a lot more of this year. Yeah, more in the box, more blitzing, and I thought it was because they didn't like Patrick Queen. <laughs> So, so now that when Queen started playing more, I was like, and then you saw the first two games with Hamilton, you're like, oh, please don't make it. So they're just going to play Hamilton deep. I really don't need this. And then Marcus Williams gets injured, and you're like, all right, now is he really going to play deep? Uh, and it was just like, I was going down this spiral of bad thoughts about what could potentially be this year of Kyle Hamilton. And then week three happened, and I was like, okay, now I feel much better. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, ah. Uh sense of relief more than Seriously. anything isn't it like it really was uh, i think i had him as my db my db3 db4 coming into the season yeah um, he was he was top five for me too yes yeah, so it was it was difficult to difficult to see you know, we always say like it's only a couple of weeks let's give it time but we, you do start to get concerned don't you so when you when you see those floodgates open it's just like, a, like i say a, a huge wave of relief that Seriously. he is that guy that we hoped he would be and uh gives you gives you a sense of optimism for for what's going to come going forward so Let's yeah. let's keep fingers crossed that um, that he's he's you know he can he can deliver the goods on an ongoing basis over the rest of the season. Who is your next DB that you like for week four? Uh, Grant Delpit of the uh, Cleveland Browns going up against uh, Baltimore. Obviously, Lamar Jackson runs the ball a lot. He had 100 yards rushing last week, so they'll be in contain as much as they can. Uh, they throw to tight ends, so they, they throw everything pretty much underneath. They don't really throw too much deep. And Grant Delpit has spent pretty much, I think, 60% of his snaps have been in the box, which is fantastic if you're looking for IDP production from a safety. So he he's like one of the highest box snapped safeties in the league. So playing in the box against the Baltimore Ravens, it's just a recipe for success for Grant Delpit. Yeah, I really like the guy as well. He's ranked for me. He's my DB6. Yep. coming into this week uh one behind Antoine Winfield one ahead of Richie Richie Grant like you say those those box snaps are just really uh, really tasty um doesn't really have a lot of um uh consistent linebackers uh, playing right. ahead of him that, that you that At you all. know are going to uh, absorb all those tackles right and it's usually a, a, a committee of, of sort of two three guys um so yeah Delpit you know he's gonna he's gonna be one of the leading tacklers at the position this year. And like you say, Ravens is a good matchup. So could be could be good this week as he has been um so far this season. So big fan of the player and I like his role and I like his matchup. Yeah. Good call. I want you to make a call that I don't agree with. I don't want to sit here and just say I agree, I agree. But yeah, you've uh, <laughs> all of your all of all of your choices have been good. So gotta stay true. Um, so my my uh, second guy uh, at the position is um, Reed Reed Blankenship. Um, so I was I was skeptical about his chances of securing an every down role before the, the season started. Right. I, I saw all the preseason hype, the interceptions in in sort of joint practices and whatnot. But I was I was concerned about the signing of uh, Terrell Edmonds, uh, Justin Evans, maybe to a lesser extent, and then there was obviously Sidney Brown that they drafted right. in, the, in the third in the third round, but. You know, Blankenship's form has, has carried over into the season. He missed uh, week two with an injury. I think it was a, a rib uh, injury, but he's played every down in the other two games and he's combined four, 14 tackles, an interception and a pass breakup in those two games. You know, he'll be streaky. Um, we talked about one of the reasons we like someone like, you know, Delpit is that he's playing so much in the box. That's not who Blankenship is. He'll, he'll be a deeper guy. Uh, for the most part. Um, so he will be a bit more streaky, a bit more uh, inconsistent, perhaps from week to week, relying more on some big plays maybe and less on tackles to provide him uh, sort of a weekly floor. Um, but I think he has a, a chance to continue his hot streak this this week uh, end against the the commanders. Um, we, we saw... We saw Sam Howell. I love Sam Howell. I really want him to, to succeed. Same. Um, but, but last week know, was tough. Yeah. Four, was it four interceptions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, even if he gets close to that number this week, you've got to imagine Blankenship want to be, be one of the guys coming coming down with one of them. I don't like to predict interceptions, but um, that's they're so un, you know it's difficult to predict. Um, but yeah, I, I love Blankenship. 
Um, I think he could be the beneficiary of, uh, yeah, again, playing in a, in a good matchup. Um, see, see how Howell does, see if some of that poor, poor form from last week carries over to this week. Yeah, it's a tough I, matchup for Howell, isn't it? Oh, it's a horrible matchup. I mean, it's it's not going to be anything different from last week because the Eagles pass press might be the best one he's faced all season. And mm-hmm. after what happened last week, and uh, you can't put all those interceptions on him. He doesn't have time. He's trying to get rid of the ball. I mean, he's been sacked 19 yep. times in three games. It's like the guy's trying to get rid of the ball. And Reed Blankenship, I love Reed Blankenship. I mean, he's the kind of guy, he's he's just a football player. Like like you said, he plays deep, but he's always around the ball. Like he's always running up. Like his, he, he, his read and react is fantastic. Like you, you, he comes – barreling down from from the middle of the field so his read and react is fantastic so the fact that even if they run the ball they do love to run the ball with brian robinson they run it up the middle uh blanket chip's going to be one of those guys coming downhill and then if your your pass rush does what it's probably going to do blanket chip's probably going to be the beneficiary of at least a couple pass defense or maybe even an interception so i i i do i love the call good stuff good stuff um, so let's move on to the fades at the DB position. Who who are you uh, cooling uh, on for week four? I think it's just for the rest of the season. It's Jeremy Chin. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what happened between last season and this season, but his role has just diminished drastically. I know uh, Xavier Woods is out, but it wasn't even – Chin's role didn't even change last year when Woods went out. They just brought Sam Franklin in, and it's like, if you can't even take your role back from a guy like Sam Franklin, what's going on? Like they're, they're playing him a lot in the slot and he's just, he's barely playing any safety and it's incredibly concerning. And I don't see that changing at all. So it's keep chin out of your rankings almost. Yeah. Yeah. So he has snuck back into the back end of my rankings for the reason you mentioned earlier a moment ago. So obviously Woods, Woods being out and Chin's role did grow in in week three um, slightly. He's still not where we need it to be for yeah, for him, it's... especially when there's so many other safeties who are playing every down. Um, right, and it's just such a, a again we talked. I think I talked about this either last week or the week before. But it's such a massive fall fall from grace for a from a guy or for a guy who, for the most part, we we, we drafted him as a top twelve safety, didn't we? Right. We expected. Oh, yeah. We expected big things. He, he should have been like a centerpiece of that, of that, uh, of that, of that Panthers defense. One of their defensive generals, if you want to want to use that phrase. But yeah, it's just it's been weird to see. Um, I didn't entirely believe what we saw in the preseason, um, but I should have done. It's kind of like it's kind of like flowed over into the uh, the actual season itself, and it's just it's just been sort of disappointing all around. Um, right. This weekend will be interesting for me. Um, I I don't know if if they'll if they'll give him more snaps than he had last week. Um, but yeah, he did he did play a little more uh, last week. In fact, quite a bit more actually than he played in week two. So I'm kind of like, yeah, I, I'm not ready to not ready to to uh, to sell him yet. I'm kind of interested to see what happens this weekend. But yeah, long term, yeah, don't know what don't know what's going to happen. It's odd. It's almost mm. like it's almost like you. We would hope they would just put him in now, and if they really don't like him, play him so they can trade him, show his potential again, and get rid of him. So it's like give us that little bit to get to get him to go to a role where he's actually going to be productive again. It's like just please do this for yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, good point. And maybe if he does play uh, more more snaps this week, this weekend, and he is slightly more productive, he, you know, a short by window does open up that we can take advantage of if we've got him in leagues. Um, that's mm-hmm. something to watch for. Um, but yeah, certainly when everyone's healthy, they don't seem to be invested in the guy anymore. Right. My first guy is Christian Itzian, and I know that he's got he's got fans after we started this year. Um, I initially considered placing him in my rankings, um, but I left him unranked because he's he's just not playing enough um, right. yet. I got a little excited in uh, week two when he played like three quarters of the snaps uh, against the Bears, but but last week fewer than half again i didn't see an injury um i did have a look didn't see that he'd uh, he'd suffered an injury so yeah um it's really difficult to trust anybody at any position when they're playing fewer than fewer than half the available snaps uh, even at the dt position um 
thinking about Jalen Carter, really, really hard to trust guys that are playing so few snaps. But yeah, especially at defensive back. And there's just so many options there. There is a possibility he plays a, a bigger role if uh, Jamel Dean uh, misses time with the with a shoulder injury. But Dean's an outside corner, and you know Itzian has been the their, their sort of flavored sl- uh, flavored. <laughs> That'd be interesting. The favored <laughs> slot slot DB. So it's it's not it's not a like for like replacement. Um, it's just a deep, as I say, deep volatile position. So if I can't be confident the guy will play every down, I'll just look elsewhere for a guy who does. Right. Uh, so your second guy that you don't like at the DB spot. Uh, Andre Cisco in Jacksonville. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't really like the matchup because they're going against the Falcons who are incredibly run heavy. They have Tyler Algier, they have B. John Robinson, and even Desmond Ritter. And uh, they just don't have a volume passing attack. And Cisco is their deep guy. Uh, this would be a good bye week for Rayshon Jenkins, honestly, with Devin Lloyd out, movement up. Jenkins probably going to spend a lot of time in the box, but Cisco is their deep guy. So I don't see enough volume in the passing game for Atlanta to make Cisco even worth a look this week. So he's been yeah. solid this year so far, but this matchup is just screams sit him on your bench. Yeah, I like the call with Cisco. You know, he's a deep guy. He's and again, another guy who's going to be a bit streaky. Uh, and the matchup doesn't really work in his favor. So yeah, good shout. My uh, second guy is MJ Stewart. Uh, and I'm sorry to our listeners to end on such a uh, such a, a dull player. Um, he's my DB60 or safety 48 last week, and this week he has been removed from my rankings altogether. Pretty straightforward. Um, he briefly generated some interest last week after producing a big a big game against the Colts. Uh, Ten tackles in a QB hurry. I saw him get picked up in a bunch of leagues that I'm in, and he was even started in a few, but. He's he obviously completely dropped off the radar last week once Jimmy Jimmy Ward returned to action, mm-hmm. um, and Stewart played just a handful of snaps after being an every down guy the week before. So, unless something happens to either Eric Murray or or Jimmy Ward, then Stewart has has no value and should be dropped from rosters and even the deepest of leagues. Yeah, and Jalen Petre might be back. It's potentially still questionable this week. So even if he comes back, then he's definitely see you later. Exactly, exactly. Um, excited about the idea that we might see some Petre soon. I, I didn't see that until it was just today, actually. I'm not right, sure when it was announced. It was questionable. Morning. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Joey, look, I could I could talk IDP with you all night. Uh, it's been a blast. But I, I need to get my beauty sleep, and I don't want you to get in trouble with uh, with your with your wife and daughter for taking up uh, too much of your time. So before I let you go, tell our, tell our listeners uh, how to find you on X and share a little bit about what uh, what content you're you're creating this year uh you can find all of my written work on uh footballguys.com uh been doing projections and rankings for them all week dynasty and redraft and uh i've been doing a d-line streaming article idl and edge streamers every week two at each position as well as a sleeper at each position just because especially when you're playing true position edged class is so deep so it's just you can you can stream almost every week. It's almost like streaming DBs is so deep because you have outside linebackers and four three defensive ends. So it's gotten so deep that it's kind of a, a thing I've been looking a lot more into, especially after studying defensive lines so much for in the college. So that's kind of my thing, defensive lines. So but uh I like it. The cool thing we got going on with uh, projections is our dynasty projections, which works into our uh draft dominator. So what it does is we we do our dynasty projections. We have a high, medium, and a low, and then we have a range of how long we think they'll, it'll last for, like a year range. And then once that inputs into the draft dominator, you can change your draft strategy to win now or for the future, and it'll adjust rankings. That sounds cool. Yeah, I haven't checked that out, but I will. A wicked cool tool. Yeah, definitely worth checking out. Anyone listening, um, head on over and uh, and have a look at that. And if you aren't already following Joey, and I imagine most of you are by now, um, then obviously do so. Keep an eye out for his, uh, his work. So, you know, if anyone listeners want to follow me, I'm on X at uh, Jace Abbey. Um, and the rankings that, that I've talked about on this show are available on uh, the IDP show substack to our subscribers. Uh, as always, I want to extend my appreciation to everyone who's taking the time to check out the podcast or the, the YouTube show. 
Uh, I hope you dominate your matchups this week, and I'll see you again at the same time next week to break down the week five rankings. Until next time.